Once again, welcome back to our SPSS Tips and Tricks series. And we're looking at part four now, which is the date and time wizard. And the date and time wizard, as the title implies, is actually a series of procedures that allow us to manipulate uh, time or date fields. Uh, you'll find it, uh, like the previous example, under the uh, transform menu about two-thirds of the way down in this case it's called the date and time wizard let's have a look at it and see what we can do okay so we've read in a sample data file here in the SPSS version 24 and the file contains a number of different uh, date fields and they're in various formats if we want to get started and have a look at the date and time wizard and how it relates and what things we can do to this particular data set of course as I saw earlier on we go to transform uh, about two-thirds of the way down into date and time wizard we call up. And the very first thing it says is, what would you like to do? It says, and the example is, learn how dates and times are represented in SPSS statistics. So let's have a little look at that. And it says, they are numeric variables with special display formats that you can change. The numeric value of a date or time is the number of seconds since midnight October 14th. 1582. So this is an auspicious date because, of course, it's the point at which um, Gregorian time is introduced. Most systems do pick a reference date, whether it be the first of the first 1900 or the first of the first 1960. In the case of SPSS, it simply goes back as far as it can possibly can within reason. It goes back to the introduction of Gregorian time. It tells us that, for example, dollar time is a special variable that can be used in transformations and it holds the current date and time. So it basically looks at the date the date and time on the, the clock on the computer and records that and represents it. And it also says you can extract portions of a date such as the year or the hour and create dates from calendar units and so on. So, so that's quite useful, but let's focus a little bit on this business of it's the number of seconds since midnight, October 14th, 1582. And to prove that, I've got a true date field here, which is the people's uh, date of birth for each of these employees within this organization. If I double click on that, I can change it from a date field to a numeric field. And when I come back to it, it shows me a very long number here. This is actually the number of seconds elapsed since the introduction of Gregorian time. So you can see here that all dates are in fact just numbers in the background. So if I double click on that, I can change it back into a date field and choose a format to have it displayed in. So I have a lot of different formats I can use. I'll just choose the top one because that's the way it was originally. Click OK. We come back and it's displayed correctly again. OK, so what about another example? Another example here we have something called bdate string. And this is in fact just a string field. It's a character string. It's not unusual to read in data from a third party for a third party system to export a date field in a format like a string, which unfortunately means that you can't really treat it as a true date field within systems like SPSS unless you somehow manage to tell SPSS that this is a string field. So to do so, if I go to transform again, date and time wizard, um, the first option beneath the, the top item here is create a date or time variable from a string containing a date or time. So we can do that very simply. I tell it that birth b date string is 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 uh, the one I'm interested in here. I can see the pattern that it represents is the you know, dd month month y y year year, and I can say this is the example I want. This is how I want it represented. Um, and if I hit next at this point, I can say okay, well, uh, let's just give it a name. So I'll call it true date one because we're going to do more than one of these and hit finish at that point. And if I look along the end here. Sure enough, here we have that same field, but it's um, the true date one. It's actually this uh, birth date string that's been converted into a true uh, numeric date field for us. So that's our, uh, our first example of manipulating a date field using the date and time wizard. Let's go to the transform again and see what else we can do. So the next example is creating a date or time variable from variables holding parts of dates or time. So you can see here in the background, I have three fields which are actually three separate time fields or date fields. One is the day of the month, one is the month of the year, and the third is the year itself. And it's, again, it's not unusual to have data sets where these have been split up. You may want to combine particularly things like month and year together. 
to create a true date field. So if I wanted to do that, I could simply choose that option and then tell it which field is the year, which field is the month, and which field represents the day of the month, which of course here is called day. Hit next, and again I'll call it true date two, and I'll choose a different uh, format this time. Let's choose one with dots between them as separators. Hit finish. Let me look along the end here, and then we have true date uh, two has been created from from parts, uh, separate fields that represent the dates and times. Okay, so what about playing around with dates and time fields, you know, subtracting and adding values to them? If I go to transform again down to date and time wizard, here we have calculate with dates and times. So if I go calculate dates and times here, I can say, okay, do you want to add or subtract a duration from a date? For example, add a month to an age or add a time variable to a date or time variable. Let's have a little look at an example we can, we can choose here. So if I choose birth date, and let's say I wanted to add a constant to that. Well, I could say, okay, well, I want to, uh, I want to, let's say we're going to assume that everybody's going to retire um, 65 years after they're born. I could say, well, okay, I want to add 65 years to birth date. So I'd say the duration units I want are years. I'm going to add 65 years to that and hit next to it. And that would create a field for me telling me date of retirement. So it's a way for me to add a constant to a date. So date of retirement is what I'm typing in here and hit finish. And it creates a new field for me, showing me the date that these people would retire on, assuming that they all retired exactly on, on, on their 65th birthday, so to speak. So that's a little, a little example of manipulating and playing around doing calculation of date. What about going back to date and time here? And then looking at the other option here with the calculate with dates and times, like that. Um, you can calculate the number of time units between two dates. So we can say, well, how old are these people today? Yeah, assuming they're still alive. And here we can take the dollar time field and take away from that their birth date and return the value to us in a, in a unit that makes sense. Well, years make sense. So that's what we want to do. And um, we can wrote a truncate to integer so that it actually rounds it down or it actually truncates it down to uh, and then a whole number so it doesn't have decimal places. And then we can create a new field and say age today. And so these are the age of the people today, assuming they're still alive. Hit finish that point and it creates a new field for us showing what their age is today. So that's a good tour through the date and time wizard. There's a bunch of other little things there um, which I haven't really talked about. One is extracting parts of date and time. So if you wanted to pull out the year, that's where you could do it. You want to pull out the month of a date. Yes, this is where you do it. And the other one is uh, assigning periodicity to a data time uh, uh, to a data set with, with time data in it. This is really for time series analysis, and it's um, it actually opens up another dialog box for you. But there we have it. Hope you find that useful, and uh, look out for our next example in our tips and tricks series. Thanks very much.